Okay, we have reached the last section that you guys are going to be responsible for while I'm away. Um, when I come back, we'll tackle the really hard ones on 6.7, 6, seven, six eight. Uh, Okay, so I want you to consider uh, looking at combinations of things. Suppose we have seven things and we're finding a combination of zero of them. Zero things out of seven. There's only one way that you can get zero things out of seven. If I'm just choosing one thing out of seven, there's only seven different ways I can get the one thing chosen out of a group of seven. But you'll see that if I choose two things out of seven, there's actually 21 ways to do that. If you plug that into your calculator and find that out, there's 35 ways to do that. Well, choosing three things out of seven is a lot like not choosing three things out of seven or instead choosing four things. You get the same number and you get the same thing here. Whoops, that's a two. And then seven and then one. So we get the symmetry whenever we've got a cascade of combinations like that that count up by one each time. So this symmetry, if you go back and do with six and five and four, you'll see that you get Pascal's triangle. It's a pattern that's very easily found by just adding the two numbers immediately above it. So two and one are three, two and one again are three, and then I go one, and then it's four and six and four and one and five and ten and ten and five and one and so on. And you can continue, uh, continue that on your own or you can print one out off the internet which is what I've done here and this is Pascal's triangle in all its glory down to 16 rows and some of these numbers get small but you'll have a more accurate um, more accurate printout um, in front of you shortly. So what do we use Pascal's triangle for? Well as I've just shown it's a way of using our NCR numbers. So if we go back to a problem from not so very long ago where we were on page 331 and we're looking at these uh, cheerleading squads and we're working out the probability that we have a squad with exactly two guys out of six when we're choosing six at random. Our probability is just going to be the things we're interested in and that's uh, two guys out of six out of the total and that's just six out of uh, 15. So really, we're looking for 15C6, all right? Well, if you look at our numbers for NCR, this is our seventh row right here, okay? And we count rows from the top after skipping the first one. So this is row one and this is row two, and this is row three, and four, and five, and six, and there's row seven. So if row seven can be found by 7C0, and that's 7C1, when we want to go to 15C6, we go down to row 15 here. I'll scoot that up a little bit. Here's row 15, and so that's 15C0. One, two, three, four, five, and six. 15C6, is 5,005 from Pascal's triangle. And then, if you'll recall from this problem, we wanted to multiply 9C2 times 6C4. Well, 9C2, there's row 9, and that's 0, 1, 2, so that's 36 times, and then 6C4. So I go to row 6, and there's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and that's 15. So that makes it a little bit easier. Back before the days of calculators, Pascal's triangle was a big time saver. You'll see that this is a relatively easy section in the book. It is all about shortcuts, and that was the shortcut there we just learned. And I just want you guys to be aware that part of the book here with the exercises, they're just having you they're just having you find the values of these using Pascal's triangle. Okay? So the critical thing is, for instance, if we're doing problem number 12 one last time, that is 6C3. When you go to your triangle, row 6 is given by this number here on the second um, diagonal of numbers. It's actually called the first diagonal, but that tells us it's row 6. And 6C3 start with 0, 1, 2, and 3, and that'll be 20. All right? Good luck on the homework. Thanks for being good sports.